going to take you step by step through everything you need to know to not just edit a video, but a great video in Premiere Pro. As always, let's put a timer on the screen and let's get started. With Premiere Pro open, click on new project and this will open up a brand new import mode. Honestly, this deserves its own video, but we're just going to stick with the essentials for now. First things first, let's enter a name for our project and choose the location. I usually create a folder for each video that I work on and then inside that folder, I will have a project folder. And now when it comes to importing files, we can actually do two things. We can use this new import mode or we can do it the old way. And I will show you how to do both. On the left side, we can navigate to the file location. Now in this case, I saved my video folder on my desktop. So I'll click on desktop and now I'm going to double click on the folder to open it up and select my files. If you want to import the entire folder or multiple folders, then we can click once on that folder or tick the box in front of it. If we use a file location more than once, which is usually what I do, then we can actually choose to favorite the folder by clicking on the star right here. Now it will be easily accessible in the left panel right here. And if we don't need the folder anymore, we can unfavorite it by clicking on the star button again. If we take a look on the right side of the window, we have another panel called import settings. The first one is copy media, which is great if you wanna copy media from an SD card, for example, but for now we're going to leave this disabled. Then the second one is new bin. A folder is called a bin in Premiere Pro, and if you want to put all of the clips that you just selected inside a folder, then you can create a folder right here and give it a name if you want to. The last option is to create a new sequence. Now in Premiere Pro, a timeline is called a sequence. So what we can do here is we can create a new sequence and then when we click create, we will see all of those clips that we selected already on the timeline. But I'm going to skip that for now because I wanna show you how to create a sequence later. All right, let's click on create. As we can see, our folder or our bin has been created and can be found right here. And if we double click on it, we can see all of the files that we selected. I personally prefer the old way of importing footage because the way that I work and maybe you're working the same way is that I usually create a folder structure on my computer. I will have a folder for A roll, for B roll, for screen recordings, for music, for audio, whatever it is. And with the old way of importing footage, you can just drag and drop those folders in Premiere Pro and you'll maintain that folder structure. Now, the way that this works is in the import mode, you would only have to enter your name and the location of the project and then hit create and then drag the folders in Premiere Pro. Whichever way you choose, welcome to Premiere Pro. Now on the screen, there's quite some things going on and maybe you don't understand everything, but that is fine because we're going to be exploring everything. First, we wanna make sure that we're in the editing workspace. And in order to go to the editing workspace, click right here and then click on editing. There are four main windows on our screen. This one right here is the project panel. Then up here, we have our source monitor and this is where we can preview all of our files or actually our sources. So if we double click on a clip. As you can see, it opens right here in the source monitor. So essentially the source monitor is linked to the project panel. Next to it, we have our program monitor and this is where we will see our edit. So this window right here is linked to our timeline. Finally, in between our sequence window and our project panel, we have a toolbar with a bunch of tools that we can use to edit our video. There are a lot more workspaces and tools and windows that we can use, but we're going to keep it simple and we're just going to stick to the default editing workspace and we're going to be using just three tools. Yes, just three. We're going to be using the selection tool, the razor tool, and the text tool. <laughs> now, if your editing workspace looks any different, then go up to window, workspaces, make sure that you have the editing workspace selected and then click on reset to saved layout. All right, let's create our sequence so we can get started. In the project panel, right click on it, click on new item, and then click on new sequence. Now that opens up this window right here where we can choose all of the timeline presets. But if you don't know the frame rate or the resolution of your videos, that is totally okay. In that case, I recommend to close this window and instead right click on a clip, preferably your A roll clip, and then click on new sequence from clip. Now the sequence will appear right here and this is where we will be editing our video. Since we chose to create a new sequence from clip, that clip will now be on the timeline. If you want, you can delete that clip and just start fresh. But in this case, I'm just going to stick it here because this is my A-roll, which will be the narration of the video. The first thing that I always like to do is I like to zoom in on the timeline. And there's a few ways that you can do this. You can either grab this bar right here to zoom in or 
out, you can press the plus key or the minus key, or you can hold alt while you're scrolling with your mouse. Now let's also make the tracks bigger by double clicking on the track. And if you want to reset the track to the default height, then you double click on it again. To play through this clip, we can hit spacebar on our keyboard, or we can click and hold this thing right here that's called a playhead to move it around. Now when it comes to A-roll, there's usually a lot of pauses or mistakes that we want to cut out. Now in order to do this, we're going to press C on our keyboard to enable the razor tool, or in the toolbar, you can click on the razor tool right here. Simply click on the clip where you want to cut it, and we're gonna cut it right here as well. If you want to level up straight away, instead of using the razor tool, you can actually put the playhead where you want the cut to be and then hit Ctrl K or Command K. In order to get our cursor back, we press V on our keyboard or click on the selection tool right here in the toolbar. We want to delete this bit right here. In order to do that, we can press delete on our keyboard, but that will create a gap. Now, in order to get rid of this gap, we can right click and click on ripple delete. But of course, there's also a shortcut for this. I'm quickly going to undo what we just did by pressing Ctrl Z or Command Z. And now instead of deleting it and then ripple deleting it, we can actually ripple delete this clip. And we can do that by hitting Shift Delete on our keyboard. Alternatively, what you can do is if you cut out everything first, all of the pauses, all of the mistakes, you'll have a bunch of gaps on your timeline. What you can do then is you can go to Sequence and then click on Close Gaps. Now that we've edited, 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 edited our A roll, it is time to edit our B roll. Now, if you don't know what B roll is b-roll is basically supporting clips that you can use to tell your story or even better to visualize your story so in this video i am talking about the macbook pro so what i can do here is use a clip that shows the macbook pro so let's go to the project panel now there's a few ways to view all of these clips you can view them in list view right here icon view or freeform view. I usually like to do icon view because that will actually show previews of all of those clips. I'm going to double click on one of the clips to open it up in the source monitor. And if you want the entire clip on the timeline, then you just grab the screen and drop it on the timeline. Now, if you want a selection of the clip on the timeline, we need to create an in and an out point, which is basically a start and an end point. And we do this by hitting I on our keyboard to select our in point or our start point. And then we hit O to create our our out point. So now that we've created a selection, again, if you want both the video and the audio, you can grab the screen and you can drag that onto the timeline. But if we look closely, we can also see these two buttons right here. Now this button is the one that we use if we only want the video part to be on the timeline. And this button is the one that we use if we only want the audio to be on the timeline. Just click and hold on the button while we drag our selection to the timeline. If for some reason your audio or your video doesn't appear on the timeline, you want to make sure that you have selected selected those tracks. For example, if I unselect this track right here, we will see that I am only able to drag the audio to the timeline, even though I selected both video and audio. Now, if I select the video track again, now both video and audio will be dropped. Now, this is when we would repeat the steps that we just took. So cut up the clips, reposition them, make sure that it all works for your video. Let's quickly look at how to add music. Music is so important in your videos. It sets the mood. It helps you tell the story. It is everything. And if you upload your video to any social media platform, it is super important that you make sure that you don't use copyrighted music. If you do choose to use copyrighted music without permission, you risk getting copyright claims or even worse, copyright strikes, and you'll get terminated from YouTube. However, there actually is a way to use copyrighted music without getting into trouble. It's completely legal and that is licked. Licked offers over 1 million mainstream songs that you can license for your videos on YouTube, but also for a lot of other social media platforms. And when I say mainstream, I mean songs like this one and this one. Licked's goal is to work with all of the major record labels to make mainstream music available for every single creator. This means that by using chart music from Licked, we do not get any copyright strikes, but we also don't lose out on our AdSense money. The best part about using mainstream music is that your audience knows the music, they love the music, and this will help you engage them in your story. In addition to this, you can also get a subscription to their stock library. They have over 100,000 songs that you can use unlimitedly on any social media platform. You can choose to filter by mood or genre 
genre or use one of their playlists like the Billion Streams Club to find music a lot easier. For this example, I'll use Don't Do This by Jason Pedler and Douglas Brown. If you want to try this out, you can sign up to Licked by using my link in the description because it'll give you 14 days of free stock music and 50% off your first mainstream track. Now, when it comes to editing music, the same principles apply. Double click on the music track to open it up in the source monitor and then set your in and out points and put it on the timeline. Then if we want to change the volume of the music, which is something that I always recommend if there is any sort of monologue or dialogue going on, we can go back to the effect controls panel, go down to the audio section, and then right here where it says volume, we're actually going to untoggle the stopwatch in front of level because we want the entire track to be at a certain volume. And then we're just going to lower the volume. Another great starting point if you don't really know which audio levels to use is to open up the essential sound panel. Let's go to window and click on essential sound. I made an entire video about this, so again, I'll leave that in the description, but to quickly go through this, what you want to do is you want to label your music track and you want to label your dialogue tracks and then click on auto loudness. This should give you a pretty good starting position for your audio levels. Let's move on to the effects. If we click on the clip and we go to the effect controls panel right here where the source monitor is as well, we can already find some basic effects such as position, scale, and opacity. So if you want to reposition your clip or you want to scale up your clip a little bit because maybe it is not in the same resolution as your A-roll, this is where you do it. If you want to add an effect, for example, a blur effect that isn't here by default, we need to open up the effects tab and we can find the effect step down here where the project panel is. Now, if you don't see it, then go to window and then check effects. As we can see, there are separate folders. Now we can open a folder and search for an effect, but this will take a little bit of time. So if you already know the name of the effect, you can just type it in right here and it will pop up. In this case, we're looking for a blur effect and I'm going to choose Gaussian blur and drop that on the clip. So if we go back to the effect controls panel, we will find the effect here. And this is where you would change the values. So in this case, we want to add a little bit of blur and right now it's set to zero. So in order to add blur, we need to increase the number. And if we wanna get really fancy and we want to animate it, we can do this using keyframes. Keyframes are basically checkpoints that we create to direct Premiere Pro from one point to another point. In order to create keyframes, we need to click on the stopwatch in front of blurriness. Now, as we can see, there's already a keyframe right here and this one is zero. So if we move through the video or skip a few frames and we want to create another keyframe, we can simply change the value and another keyframe has been created for us. And this is how you would animate an effect in a nutshell. Now, if you don't want the effect anymore, you can simply click on that effect's name and then hit delete. You can add as many effects as you want to one clip and they can all be found in the effect controls panel. Now, if you want to find a video transition, you can also find that in the effects panel. So let's remove the search query to get our folders back and and open up the video transitions folder. For this example, I want a dissolve. So I'm going to open up the dissolve folder and then click on cross dissolve. Now, in order to add this to our video, we need to drag and drop this to where the two clips meet. And if that doesn't work, which sometimes is the case, just double click on the transition and then change it to center right here. Now, something that I like to play around with is speed. So if you wanna speed up a clip or slow down a clip, you're actually not going to be able to find that in the effects tab. Instead, you need to select the clip that you want to speed up or slow down and hit Control R or Command R if you're on a Mac. This dialog box will pop up and this is where we can change the percentage. Anything above 100 will speed up the clip and anything below 100 will slow down the clip. In order to add text to our video, we simply hit T on our keyboard to enable the text tool or we can click on the T in the toolbar. Then click on the screen and start typing your text. To stylize our text, we're going to double click on the text layer on the timeline to open up a panel that is called the Essential Graphics Panel. Now this is where we can change the font, the size, or the alignment, for example. In the Essential Graphics panel, we can also find a lot of animations that will really help you level up your video without any effort. The one that I really like is this pop-up text animation that I created myself. I just pop it on the timeline and then I change the text and the duration. Now, if you wanna get this preset, I'll leave a link in the description so you can pick it up. In order to import this into Premiere Pro, at the bottom of the graphics panel, click on this button right here and then just drag and drop it on the timeline and you're good to go. All right, let's move on to one of my favorite parts of editing color grading. First, we need to open up the Lumetri color panel and we do that again by going to window and then click on Lumetri color. 
There are several tabs right here, but the most important one for color correction is the basic correction tab. This is where we can change the white balance and the light or the exposure of your video. We can make some adjustments using all of these sliders right here. If you have something white in your video, then I recommend you to use the eyedropper tool and then clicking on that white part because that will correct the white balance automatically for you. Something else that I could recommend when you're just starting out and this might be a little bit too much for you is to use the auto button right here. This is the new auto color feature that was introduced produced by Adobe in 2022 and it is powered by Adobe Sensei which is their AI. This button should give you a pretty good starting point for your color correction but however I always recommend to learn about this stuff so if you're ready to learn about this stuff you know what to do. Now, if you watch filmmaking YouTube, you've probably heard the word LUT, which is a video filter. And if you would like to add one of those to your video, then go to the creative tab. And then here where it says, look, click on the drop down menu, click on browse and import your LUT or use any of the default ones right here. All right, we're done with our video. So it's time to export it and show it to the world. Let's open up the new export mode. On the left side, we can choose how you would like to export our video. Do we only want a media file or do we also want to upload it to YouTube, for example? Then right here, we can choose a file name and we can choose our location. And then to not overcomplicate the export process, I would recommend you to use an export preset. There are a lot of building presets that you can use. I recommend using the YouTube 4K, for example, or the Match Source Adaptive High Bitrate. Now let's go to the bottom right corner, click on Export, and congratulations, you have just edited your first video in Premiere Pro. Now make sure that you watch this beginner playlist that I created especially for you, and of course, don't forget to subscribe.